Does anyone want to just quickly share, since we're going to be talking about Kids Guide to Smart Money? Anyone want to throw out some words? What do you know about money? Okay. Um, it has something to do with the economy. It has something to do with the economy. Very good, definitely. Um, money is, you know, the basis for the economy. What else do you know about money? Yeah, you can buy stuff with it. You can buy goods and services. What else? Uh, work. Uh, they have some of the president's faces on it. There are a lot of president's faces. That's right. And it doesn't. It's not necessarily all presidents either. You've probably seen. Um, there's Alexander Hamilton, Benjamin Franklin um, on some bits of money. So also, there's money. Uh, it, how many of you have ever traveled to a different country before? Raise your hand if you've been to a different country. Wow, I'm seeing a lot of raised hands. That's pretty impressive. Um, so for those of you who have been to a different country before, you probably know uh, how you exchange currency. So I've been to, uh, let me think, I think 11 different countries now. I've been able to travel a lot because of my writing and my speaking. And so uh, I've collected, and where, I like to, where we go, we end up collecting you know, pieces of change and stuff. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see these examples of different kinds of money from the places we've gone. Oops, I'm horrible at moving this camera. Okay, here we go. So this is, uh, let me come up closer. If you take a look at this piece of money, you can see that it has very funny looking writing on it, but that's yeah. Arabic. And so, um, that's cool. yeah, that is really cool, right? So this is Arabic, and um, on the other side, you can see where it comes from, from the United Arab Emirates, and it's five Durham's. I mean, wow. Cool. So, yeah, very, very nice of So that reflects um, sort of the heritage of the United Arab Emirates. And then here's, let's see, oh, wow, this is a lot. Um, oh, wait, no, that's so this is, um, anyone want to guess what this is? You know what this is called? Nathan? A Chinese dollar? Chinese? Not quite. If you take a pretty careful look at it, maybe, I'm not sure how high quality the video is, but up at the um, corner you can see Banco de Mexico, uh, or I'm not quite saying oh, that. Oh, yeah. Right. So, yeah. Mexico, yeah. Yes, so this is a Mexican. Does anyone know what the currency is called? Oh, Nathan? Nathan? Peso? Peso. Yes, very good. Yeah. 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 Pesos, very good. So we've seen some pesos from Mexico, um, yeah. Durham from the United Arab Emirates. It's in the Middle East. And uh, let's see, what's this one? Wow, my goodness, we really never exchange currency after coming back from trips to. So this one might be a little hard. It's um, pretty cool looking. This is. Uh, cool. And you'll see, here's a clue, if you know a little something about this country, is that the, is that the currency is printed in a few different languages. It actually, four to be specific, so it says, um, it says, Banque Nationale Suisse, Banque Nationale Suisse, Saint Franc, Cento Franc, Okay, like, excuse my really bad pronunciation there, but the four languages is because this is from Switzerland, and in Switzerland, they have four official languages. So you can learn a lot about a country just from looking at its currency, which is pretty cool, right? So um, if, you've, if you've taken the time to sort of look at currency, look at coins from different countries, then you'll notice there are a lot of different things that you can learn about the country. Who they put on the currency shows maybe some national heroes, presidents, leaders that they really admire. It could also, um, if there's like maybe a quote from a poem or a certain inscription written on it, maybe the country's national motto, you can learn a lot about what the country thinks and feels, or uh, how they, I guess, um, what their motto is as a people. So there's a lot that you can learn just from looking at money. Now, of course, that's sort of a, a, a little explanation about international currency, and you can see that whenever you travel. But there's also a lot to be learned about money here at home and how we deal with money. So who has, who tries to save their money as much as possible? Would you consider yourself a saver? I see a lot of raised hands. Okay. So I kind of, I myself am a bit of a saver. Whenever, um, if you look at, for instance, my older sister and me, my older sister tends to be a little bit more of a spender. She'll be, you know, she'll, she'll have her, she teaches piano and violin to students, and so she'll get her money from teaching a lesson, and then she will usually spend it on something like gum or um, 
energy bars or something pretty quickly. Now me on the other hand, I sort of, a lot of people in my family make a little fun of me because whenever I lend money to my sister, I don't usually give it to her unless it's her birthday or something, but if she borrows money from me, sometimes I'll charge her interest um, or fun. Does anyone know what interest is? And you can then 
eventually spend it. You can also save for way bigger things. You might save for a really big good. Let's say you had your eye on this really fancy pair of roller skates for many, many weeks now, and you've just been saving up your allowance to be able to get it. So, for right now, probably your parents are buying most of the goods and services that you are taking. And so when you go to get your hair cut, who pays for it? Mom. Yeah. Mom. Dad. Dad. Probably, probably whoever takes care of you, your parents or guardians. So that's, uh, right now, your parents are paying for your goods and services. However, when you get a little older, if there's goods and services that maybe your parents are like, oh, you, can, you have enough allowance, you can get that on your own, then you will be responsible for really saving up for that. And that's where really good money management skills come in. So what do you think good money management means? Being able to manage your money well. Yeah, being able to manage your money well. Very good. So what are some ways that you think that you could manage your money well? Okay. Um, you could save some, you could, um, buy, you could, uh, use some to buy stuff, and then you could, uh, use some others, uh, to, like, donate or something. Very good. You could, you could decide, like, when you get your allowance, then you could look at it and be all, if, if let's say that you didn't really want to manage your money that well, you could just have your allowance and just go out and buy what the first thing that you look at and just think it's cool and you buy that with all of your allowance. Now that's what you might do if you were very impulsive, but if you have good money management, you can take the money and you can say, well, I'm going to set aside one dollar for my charity fund and once I have ten dollars, I'll give it all to my good charity and I'm going to take um, one dollar and put this into my savings and my piggy bank for later use and then I'm going to take 50 cents and go and spend it on something I like. So you could divide your money this way and you know put some aside for savings, put some aside for charity, all kinds of stuff. So that's a really good idea. Um, now another thing is that once you have enough money you could also put it into a bank and that way uh, your piggy bank is a little relieved there's as much weight on it. So does anyone have a bank account? Wow, I'm seeing a lot of great things. Great, so you probably know a lot about money just from uh, your bank account. It's probably savings for college. Um, you could also be saving for uh, other things. Like for instance, if you were going to a summer camp, you could all the money in your bank account could be saved for summer camps, for college, for other educational things. So you know that there are different places to save money. You obviously have your traditional piggy bank. You have your bank account, which is a bit more secure and you can also collect interest on that usually. And then you uh, know how to manage your money. When you get your allowance, don't just go out and spend it all on the first thing that you see, but actually be pretty strategic about it. Cool, so what are some ways you can save money? When you are going shopping, for instance, how do you save money? Um, you, could, you could have a special, um, you could have a special like jar or something to keep your money in and not be like tempted to go out and buy the um something that you would like something that you um want at the store like a candy bar or something yeah that's definitely a great strategy for managing money when you first get your allowance and setting it aside so you're not tempted but let's say you take your 50 cents you take your dollar and you go to the store and you say okay now i'm going to start looking around and see what i can buy and you have your money with you what are some ways that you can save while you're shopping. Okay. Um, you could uh, just say, oh, I've changed my mind. I don't want to buy anything. You could just go home. Okay, search. You could use a gift card for the store. Yeah, if you have, um, like for instance, if you have your birthday or, or holidays and, and you have relatives who are giving you gift cards, you can definitely use a gift card is a great way to save your own money. I, I think I bought pretty much all my parents and my sisters. All my family's holiday presents pretty much came from my various gift cards. So I didn't spend that much of my own money on presents, actually. That was pretty nice. What are some other things? Have any of you ever clipped coupons before? What else do we look for when we go shopping to be a good consumer? What else do we do? Sophie? Look for sales? Look for sales. You look for sales, yeah. Definitely whenever there are sales, you can take a look and see if it's a good deal. But another thing is that um, 
when, when there are sales, make sure that you don't buy something just because it's on sale. You know, you might not need like the little um, chia head. Have you ever seen one of those? They're pretty funny. It's yeah. A chia head. You might not need one just because it's on sale. So, they are fun. They are fun. I like them. Um, so just make sure that you see a sale, you're like, wow, there's a sale. You run over there, but do look at the, each thing carefully and see, okay, do I really need this? And then it can be a good buy. Great, so looking for things on sale is good. Uh, clipping coupons, what else might you do? Look for taxes. Look for taxes. Well, make sure that you always remember maybe how much sales tax is. Like, that's a really good point. When you're buying something, if it says it's $5, it might not be just $5. Because if there's a sales tax, then when you buy it, there will be an extra amount of money added on. So maybe like 10 cents or something, depending on how much the item is and uh, the percentage of your state sales tax. So that's something to always keep in mind. If you only have $5, you might be better, you might be safer buying something that costs $4.50 to make sure you have enough to cover the tax. Cool. Now, uh, how many of you have heard of like brand names? You know that some brands are, can be more expensive than others. So, yeah, if you've ever heard of like some, and maybe. Maybe everyone in your school is wearing Nike shoes and suddenly, or Converse, now everybody wants Converse or Nike or whatever type of shoe it is. And um, like I remember when, uh, I think Michael Jordan is coming back with the Air Jordans and now everybody really wants them and so they're going to be super expensive. So you know that some brands are going to be more expensive than others, even if the two types of shoes really aren't that different, one might cost way more because there's Michael Jordan involved or because it's a famous brand name. So when you're shopping, keep in mind that maybe you could get a way better deal just by not shopping uh, to find a brand name. So that's another thing to keep in mind. I'm glad that you guys aren't, aren't too worried about brand names yet. All right, so what have you learned about money? What, what are some of the things that you've learned about money? Um, we've learned about um, how to manage money, um, about all the goods and services, and um, lots of other stuff about it. Okay, so in, in your class, have you, um, before, so before this video conference, um, what are some of the, some of the things you've learned about that? Sorry, like, you, you've been doing this as part of a um, unit about money, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. So, do you want to tell me some of the other things you've learned? So, for instance, your teacher mentioned that you were learning about sales and what to do at stores. So, are there any other things that you can share? Uh, no. mm -hmm. Accounting? Great. So, scarcity. Oh, scarcity. scarcity. Yeah. Sorry. So, supply and demand? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, when you're when you're learning about all these different concepts, remember that it all plays together because when you think about the larger economy, then um, when you go and make a purchase at the store, then that helps the store make a profit, which helps keep whoever's working at the store employed, and then they take home their salary and maybe will spend it on groceries, and that keeps that store employed and will maybe purchase a good or a service from your parents, you know? So it's a big connected chain. So never think of your money as something very individual, like this is this is just me. It's you're part of a way bigger. Like every time you make a purchase at a store or you put your money into a bank, then you're really part of the whole larger economy. So each one of you has the power to, you know, by saving or by spending or whatever choices you make with your money, you can have a really big impact, which is pretty interesting to think about. Now, um, as as you're learning all these tips for saving money and managing your money then you might also want to set goals for yourself as to what you're saving for and maybe keep a journal as well of your spending and be able to look back on that. Uh, and that'll definitely help. If you've ever heard of like food diaries for people who are on a diet, write down everything they eat. It's kind of like the same with money, writing down what you're spending on. All right, so what we're going to do now is make a complete list of, let's say, maybe we can even make 10 to 11 tips. Let's say that we were making um, a pamphlet or a book for someone else about how to save money and it's going to be just the top tips that we all know. So we already know a few like buy things on sale, uh, keep a journal, 
of spending. Um, what are some other things? So let's say we're making a list of the top ten tips. Shelter. 
Shelter. Shelter. Yeah. Water. Water. Yeah, so food, water, <laughs> shelter, clothing. That's essentially um, all of the needs that we have. Now, there are some other things that you might need, like let's say if um, you were going to work and your work was um, 40 miles away, then you might need to take the train or a bus or a car, but the essential needs are food, water, shelter, clothing. And so when you're buying things that aren't related to those four, then make sure that you know these are wants and limit um, buying the wants. Now, I have a question for you. So we know that food is on the list of needs, but would the king-size Snickers bar be a need? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. Assuming, okay, so maybe I should make this scenario a little clear. Assuming that your family has, you know, all kinds of other food, you have pasta and um, you have vegetables and cheese and everything, um, would the Snickers bar be a real need? Yeah. No. No, no right? No. So assuming that your family has all kinds of other food and you're doing just fine with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, then the Snickers bar is probably not a need. So, Remember that certain, although food in general, the food that will you know keep you alive is obviously a need. Things like Snickers bars or anything that's super super fancy, like um, ice cream with gold shavings on the top. Which yes, that actually does exist. Uh, that stuff would definitely be on the once side. What about the three hundred dollar pair of designer jeans? No. Yeah. No. That would probably be a want, right? And this is why, if, if there's a super, um, sure, pants are probably a need. You don't want to go to school wearing no pants. I think that would be uh, majorly humiliating. But if you, uh, the $300 designer jeans are definitely taking it to the next level. So why would you say that the designer jeans are a want? Daniel? If you could finally get out of the pants for a dress. Yes, because you could get other pants for way less. Now, if the $300 designer jeans were the only pants in the world that were available and there were just no other types of pants, no cheaper types of pants available then, and uh, you really had to buy pants, then I guess you could say that it would be a need. And that brings into mind another thing as you were talking about with Carson. That would be really stupid. Yeah, it would be pretty stupid. If, um, and actually, this is another thing on the list of ways to save money. When a new thing comes out, wait a couple weeks or even months after it's come out to purchase it. So like if you're, um, for instance, that thing with the Air Jordans coming out, everyone would be really crazy about buying them. If they had waited a couple months, or or uh, and or obviously bought other kinds of shoes, they're probably would have been cheaper. Or when your favorite CD by your favorite artist comes out, something like that. Um, so needs versus wants, really important. So next time you're walking around in the grocery store with your mom and dad, and you're like, please, 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 can we buy this ice cream? We really need Need it, think about how much you mean that word need. So needs versus wants. Now we're going to do a little interactive activity. We're going to write a story about two people, and one of them has bad money management skills, and another one has good money management skills. So we're going to be really defining what good and bad means. But instead of making sort of a list or writing it in a dry way, we're going to write a story. And so think about the best way to teach someone else how to really manage their money well. So it could be through a story presentation, we're going to do a uh, story. So, our two characters. Uh, what, should, what should the first person's name be? Paul. Um, <laughs> yes! Yes, my idea. Um, Bert? <laughs> David. David. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we have our two characters, Bob and David, um, and now we're going to use this story to really show. Have you, have you ever heard of the thing show not tell? Yeah. In writing, so we're going to really show. We're not just going to be like this is good, this is bad, and be all um, that way. Around. We're going to really weave a story that's interesting to read. All right, so Bob and David. Which so let's say Bob is the one. Uh, Bob needs to improve his money management skills, and David has pretty good money management skills. All right, so.
Well, how would you show, how would you kind of show that somebody needs a little bit of help in the money management part? Bulb. Mm -hmm. But how is my good right, where is the good right meter? How would you show? Me. Okay, Barsha, what do you say? Set. 
his head and shaking his head at Bob's foolishness. <laughs> the next day, Bob ran down to the local um, chocolate store. To the local chocolate store. Chocolate store. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so, 
so much, everybody. I really enjoyed talking about money. I hope that you have taken something away from the tips and how to share with others. And um, great job, everyone. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.